I can't remember. I think is it the chief technical officer? I think Bond uh, is her name. She's like one of the heads of over like Xbox hardware and stuff like that. And she's like, this next Xbox is going to be our biggest technological leap yet. It's going to be the biggest one ever. And it and I'm like, okay, Redfall. It doesn't matter how <laughs> great your console is if your game is right. Redfall. Hello and welcome to level 97 of the Thoughts and Players podcast, the gaming podcast with both takes and no strings attached. I am Jeremy, here with my compadre, everyone's compadre, David. What up? I do have enough to go around. Yeah, yeah. We all know. We all know. Um, how are you doing? That's good or bad, but I'll take it. Uh, yeah. I'm doing pretty good. You know, uh, pretty busy, but yeah, I'll take it. I believe busy, really, really, really busy. Um, uh, which has not been fun, like, like busy to a point where I don't know where things are or what's (laughs) happening sometimes, but, uh, you know, going through and, and, and making a way, uh, everyone, we are glad that you have joined us in on this level of the pod 97 inching ever so closer to the 100 um we're we're glad you're glad that you're with us so uh we got a couple of really good topics that we're going to explore here i think um pretty much attached to like news but it affects it affects everyone one of them kind of touching on a a topic we've we've talked about in the past so looking forward to getting to that before we get to that i want to talk about we're going to talk about some games we've been playing Yes. So um I can I can take the lead if you want. Go right ahead. Okay, so I have not really had time to play any games. But if I think about the games I have played in the interim, what would it be? It would <sighs> Okay. It's two of them. One I'm not proud of, <laughs> one I'm super proud of. Uh, the one that I am proud of, Power World. Still Still kicking dibbling, up. dibbling and dabbling, if that's the expression, still in that world, still palling it out, palling it up. I mean, um, you know, I'm not going around. I know there was, I received some feedback that, oh, you seem really pumped up to catch people. What my excitement <laughs> about that, just so I can clarify here, <sighs> my excitement about that was that a game presented a, at at best, Morally dubious activity you could do, mm-hmm. and most games don't allow you to do that. Right? right. No. Option. Now, now the game admonishes you for it. It says, "Hey, you shouldn't do that," and it sends police after you. At least this is what I've observed. I'm not saying I've done this myself. They send police after you. So obviously, the game doesn't want you to do that. Doesn't want you to catch people, but it allows you to do it if you want to do it. Okay. So that's. That was my thing. I'm like, oh, this is a morally questionable thing that a game is allowing you the the freedom to do. And in a world that seems to, in some ways, inhibit your ability to explore questionable things, mm-hmm. at least the topics of them, the some ideas and different things like that, not whether you endorse them or not, but simply explore them. It was interesting that that's one thing they allowed you to explore. So, right. um, so yeah, I've been playing Power World, been catching, um, a, you know, the Leaf Pokemon. I'm going to call them Pokemon. been catching Leaf Pokemon, Water Pokemon, all of them. Fire Pokemon, forging some, some nice metal for myself, you know, doing that. So that's what I'm proud of. The one that I'm not proud of, again, had a, a lot of stuff going on, right? I need dumb things to kind of entertain me. Right. When you hear people say, hey, I want to watch dumb television and people are like, oh, why do you watch dumb shows? Why don't people like the Big Bang Theory? Because you don't have to think as you watch it. No (laughs) one's saying it's Martin Scorsese level or whatever. I just don't have to think. Yada, 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 yada. Virgin nerd jerk, uh, nerd joke. I keep going. Right. Like that's that's what it is. So my virgin nerd joke of a game is Madden 23. That's the other game I've been playing. Wow. So I've been playing Unexpected. some Madden. I mean, you know, it's football season. We are in the throes of it. The right. um, the Detroit Lions, which is a team that I very much uh, have an affection for, 
decided in the NFC Championship game to poop themselves and lost it, and they did not go to the Super Bowl. So I had to rectify that in my own way. Now, I'm actually not playing the Lions in my franchise. I'm playing the Houston Texans. That's a different story. But, yeah, I've been <laughs> playing that. So those are the two games I've been playing, Pal World and Madden 23. Madden 23, I just need something dumb to do. Um, I should be playing NCAA football instead, but NCAA is so good, I would get into it, and that would be the only game I'm playing. So I want to make sure that I keep some diversity. I want to play, keep playing Power World. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I think I might jump into a story game pretty soon here, but those are the games I've been playing mo- mostly for the time that I've had to play games. You know, going back to the lines, you could say the only thing they kicked was themselves. Right in the nuts. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Square but, uh, in the nuts. As Cartman would say, <laughs> square in the nuts. How about you? What have you been playing? So, I actually beat Hellblade again. You did? Yes, I bought it on Steam. Yeah. I played it again. I loved it. Funny, funnily, I don't know, funny enough, the first time I played it, I didn't die a single time. Yeah. Except at, like, you know, like the very end or whatever. Mm-hmm. This time I died like five or six times. It, there's absolutely no difference in the gameplay. I just yeah. sucked at battling more now, than the first time I played it. There's the thing I'm forgetting how it completely works, but since you just played it, you'll remember more. How does the death mechanic work in that game? So, you know, you 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 are touched by the darkness or whatever they call it. Mm-hmm. I forget already, and it starts on just like her hand and wrist, yeah, and part of her arm. But as you die, it crawls, like, up her arm. And if you die too many times, it gets to your head, and then you lose. You have to start over. Ah, oh, okay, got you. And you just start back at, like, a, a certain point, you know, the last autosave or whatever. Okay. So, it, usually it wasn't back too much farther than where the fighting was. Yeah, it's it's not it's not too punishing for what it is. Yeah. Okay, Like, the because... worst one was I was towards the end and there was quite a few fights Mm -hmm. and a long passage I had to walk and I died at one of those fights and it put me at the start again. I was like, God dang it. Yeah. But yes, I love that game. It's, it's such a great game. And I remember the first time that I played it, which is the only time I played it was the first time. Uh, but, uh, when that shows that animation, the darkness, like if you die, this darkness is going to keep creeping up and you're going to be in some kind of trouble. Immediate, immense anxiety. I'm like, I can't die ever. I, um, yeah. I, so I, but, but the I'm entire a, time. I, I'm like, in a world where everything wants to kill me. I have to fight shadow beasts and shadow men. And this is already scary. It's too scary. You can't put on top of it the fear that <laughs> if I die, more of the darkness grows inside of me until it kills me. Like, I, you can't just put that on me too. Um, but it's nice to know that it's not because I didn't end up Finishing it, I swear I'm like maybe 60% done with the game. Mm-hmm. Um, but like it's nice to know that it's not too punishing. If perhaps I was to jump back into it and jumping back into it being fully incompetent, I was to die several times. That right. I would just say, Hey, you just we're not gonna completely screw you, we're gonna start you back here. It's not it's not a game from 1989 where you die and they start you all the way back at the beginning of the game. Yeah, that was the worst. That was one of the I'd leave the game on. <laughs> right. <laughs> just oh, can't save it. Because that didn't exist. I was just leaving on until I come back from school. Yeah. But yeah, I, I died five or six times. It was only kind of up my arm, maybe almost to my shoulder. Okay. If I remember correctly. But oh, it's such a lovely game. I'm so glad I replayed it. Because the next one comes out in, what, three months? Yeah. May 24th, I believe. So that's why, that's why I played it again. And, of course, I play the usual... Apex, Overwatch, TFT. Yeah. Just fun, you know, sucked in kind of games. Now, uh, so that's what I'm playing. Quick, another quick question yeah. to follow up with, Hell, with Hellblade. Okay. Um, Senua Saga is the second one, right? Senua Saga. Okay. The, finally, finally nailed well, the saga. What, what, what's the first one? Because it's Senua something. Sacrifice. Senua's Sacrifice, you're right. Okay, so yeah, so now it's Senua's Saga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I keep, when I hear the I, when I, second one, I keep thinking, so the uh, so the second one, Senua's Sacrifice, I keep thinking the first one's just Hellblade. This is all called. 
uh, but yeah, yeah, they have they have the little colon whatever. But so with the second one, um, have you pre-ordered it? I have not because I did not know that was out yet. Okay, I, I don't know if it is either. I was just assuming if they when they did a typically I think when they reveal the release date they may make it available for pre-order, but I'm not sure. That um, because the other question I was going to have for you was, are you going to do, um. Game Pass, or are you just going to buy the game? Uh, I'm going to do uh, just buy it because okay. I, I don't have the the Game Pass and stuff anymore. So uh, it's in the long run, it's cheaper for me to just buy it at whatever it's going to be, sixty seventy. Well, I Instead, think it's, it's going to retail for fifty, right? I, I'm even better. Yeah, I think I think it's going to retail for fifty. Because if I do the Game Pass, you know, it's only 15 bucks a month or whatever, but I'm going to forget to unsubscribe for five months. Right. Well, also, if you do, so if you do, ju- I think it's 10 if you do just PC. Even better. But still, I, I, it's my, better if I don't still. have, I don't have auto cancel or anything. It's going to yeah. be months before I remember to cancel it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it only works if there's like another game coming out also around that time or near that time that also is like an Xbox or might be on Game Pass that you're like interested in. You're like, hey, I want to try this out, you know? Right. Yeah. I um even for me now, it's and especially based on some recent news, uh, it's been a little bit harder for me to like, I don't know if, if the right word is to like validate why i pay for game pass because i do have ultimate so i do 15 a month mm-hmm. and i'm kind of like man this kicks a little bit of rocks I like i don't really like paying for this that much but the idea that i can there's a couple of games that are xbox staples that i can jump into and one of them the fact that i can just jump you know if i'm having whatever and i just want to play some dumb games i could jump into a madden with ea play and just pop that in or you know if i want to there's something else i can i can use that's either like through game pass i can just you know, jump in there and do it, but otherwise, if there weren't any specific Xbox games, like, you know, here's the thing, here's the thing that I'll say I looked out on. I think what I'm grateful for is that I had Game Pass because I probably would have bought Starfield and City Skylines, too, Mm -hmm. and that's $120, and I've saved money on not buying those games. Right. Because both of those games for me would have not been worth the purchase. And I've paid less through the subscription, I feel like, because I've also had other games I've played in the interim of that, like Power World and mm-hmm. different things like that, where it's kind of like, ah, oh, okay, I can see where the, the saving is if I was just going to go out and buy something just based on what it was, you know. It right. ended up not being a good choice. Um, So with, with all of this said, right, um, I don't know if you want to jump into my topic or your topic first. We can jump into your topic first, kind of like leapfrogging off of what you were just saying, because you, we've talked about Hellblade, but you also mentioned you've been playing Overwatch and Apex. Mm-hmm. So um, I know you were talking before, which I kind of like to lead you into your topic. You were talking about like the recent the recent seasons, new seasons have happened, right? Yes. And so, then, yeah. Okay. Uh, so season... 20 season 20 i think something well it started on tuesday in apex and uh no new character but they did make some big changes like one of them is the uh armor you can't armor swap now they just have these armor cores where you can still swap them out of the death packages death crates but if you grab a shield core that is bigger than your shield you do get the size of the core that it is but as soon as you lose the difference you don't get that back until you level up your own armor and you know reshield it okay so i think that's pretty cool because like if uh, a gray armor kills a red armor and they just get that red armor you know they didn't really you know work towards that armor at all especially if they were just like ratting and waiting for the third waiting the third party and there was one mm-hmm. person left out of a huge fight right you know you didn't, you didn't really you know so it it kind of helps with the ratting in the game because you know people can actually just wait and loot death boxes and try to just level them up that way and not have to fight or do anything like that 
Yeah. And the another big one is a lot of people would stay out in the ring and just use like heat shields and like med kits to just last, you know, have to fight or nothing. And they, they would get second place, you know, third place, sometimes first. And they got rid of that. If you're in the ring for four and a half minutes, they like, hey, you have 60 seconds or you're dead. Just automatically. You don't lose life. You don't not. You're just boom. Right. So that helps quite a bit. And you can't just like leave the ring and then go back into the ring because the the timer's still there. Mm-hmm. I, I've, people have tested it and stuff like that. So that helps with ratting outside of the ring. Um, they made some changes to guns, which is you know usual. You know this gun takes less damage. This one takes more damage. Stuff like that. And I think it's really helped. Uh, and of course, there's the map rotations because they have five maps now there maybe six i can't even remember but there's always a three map rotation for uh quick play and competitive stuff like that so i think the changes that they made were really good oh and of course nerfs and buffs to the actual characters themselves they okay. it, what they added also into the the armor leveling uh each character has two options at the first level and the second level of armor uh, core leveling up. And some of them are like really good, and then some of them are like, eh. But like Horizon has one where they, she can see what ammo is in the death box. Okay. That I mean, yeah, that can definitely help, but that's right. not as great as, say, on Maggie, her ultimate turns into a uh, fire grenade at the explosion instead of it just being an explosion per usual. So like that adds a lot. Or like Ashes, one of hers is when the uh, star that she throws that can uh, attach people so they can't run away. Mm-hmm. It makes it bigger and attaches the two people. Oh, like okay. That is such yeah. a huge jump in right. efficiency of uh, an ability than just, oh, look, there's there's heavy armor in that death yeah. box. Yeah, <laughs> 100%. But, Horizon is also one of the most played characters. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like you, you have to give them something because yeah. then it's like obviously you're trying to chip them off if you don't give them anything. So, I mean, the it's pretty amazing because each level, I think I said, has two options. So one game you can take option A, option B, but the next game you need option A and option A, you know? Yeah. So every game is even more different right. than it was before. But then you go on. Oh, you you say something? Yeah, I was just going to say, like, what, and all those changes, like, that was just respawns. Like, they were like, this is this is just what we're going to do. Yeah, I I do watch a lot of. uh compilation videos and um I, i'm in some forum groups you know that's why i read some stuff and like i didn't really see people being like oh we need to do something with the armor like of a lot of people are like we need to do something with the people ratting out in the ring you know so yeah. that definitely was a hey we're gonna listen to the players and do something about this and then you know character buffs and nerfs and weapon buffs and nerfs those are also kind of player related to because, like, I know uh, the 30-30 has been complained about a lot, and they dropped down the damage per bullet. They dropped down the amount of bullets in a magazine, because you have the uh, original magazine. Then you have the uh, common, uncommon, and rare uh, attachments for extended mags, and they made those less. So the maximum you could get last season was 12. This season, it's 10. Okay. Not a lot. But right. it's Something. also it's a single loaded rifle. Mm-hmm. So if you shoot all 12, you have to sit there and load 12 times. Right. And also previous season, it had double loading. So if you shot all 12, it'd be two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Now it's one, two, three, four. So like it is a big change, even though it seems small. Right. But then like. uh over at Overwatch, the the season started the same day this season. I don't think they usually do. I think just kind of how it formed. But right. uh, they made a lot of changes. They added a 
a position and competitive. It's champion, which I think they put it above grandmaster. So now even the grandmasters have something to work towards. Mm-hmm. And uh, all the projectiles got bigger. It's ridiculous. Mm. Like Hanzo has a bow and arrow. He should you should not be grazing the air by my head and getting a headshot. You right. Know? And then right. also everybody's health pool grew. So like Anzo can't even one shot anymore. If he hits you directly in the head, you have like 15 or like 20, 50 health left. Before oh, yeah. it was a nuisance. Like Widow can still one shot some characters. Mm-hmm. So they added a, health pool to everybody the projectiles are bigger they kind of reworked Farah a bit because before you could just kind of float there and uh you just had to hold space and you would use your jet fuel and eventually it would run out like now that she has like a thing where it just like kind of launches her in the direction you want to go and you don't necessarily you can't really stay up in the air as much as you used to be able to yeah and you had to be you had to be good at that too because i would play Farah every now and again and I wasn't that great at staying in the air. I felt like I was grounded a lot. Now it's even more. And uh, they added an ability to everybody, a passive, is if you're not being shot or hit, rather, not shot at, uh, after five seconds, you start healing yourself 20 uh, HP a second. So now people can just hide and recover health instead of trying to get back to the healer. I I see that as being a a double-edged sword. It's a good, bad thing. Yeah, it casualizes and, it a little bit more, and I feel like they're yeah. trying to. I mean, Overwatch doesn't really come across as a hardcore game anyway. It seems more it's, of a casual. It's game, definitely so. been dropping towards the casual side more. Yeah, because because uh, what was I gonna say? Also, the DPS have a passive is if they're hitting a target, they get twenty percent less healing. So okay. like. Uh, for Zen, for example, if he has your healing orb on you, he's healing you for 30 uh, HP a second. Mm-hmm. But if I'm getting shot at by Soldier, for example, I'm only getting healed 22 HP a second. So not only am I getting healed less, I'm also taking damage. Yeah. So that that kind of helps with the health pool getting bigger. Yeah. So... On the one side, Apex, I feel, made a lot of great changes. On the other, I feel like Overwatch made some not-so-great decisions. And my topic is, how much does changes do you think could change how much you want to play a game? Yeah, I mean, it it, it, could com- it can completely wreck you wanting to play something. I, know, yes, like. I, I agree with that. Uh, like, I mean, obviously, like, um, if I'm trying to think of, like, I, I don't play a lot of multiplayer games. If I have to think of, like, one game where where changes um, I felt like were most impactful in how I played immediately. Um, so the one the one live service game that I would say I, I w- did and probably will because I'm going to play it again. I, I really want to pick it back up. But played uh, is uh, The Division. So... Especially in the first one, they had to make a lot of different changes. They were trying to figure it out. It was a dumpster fire. But that definitely affected the way that I would play when it would come to the, um, the, the I think it's called the dead zone area. I'm trying to remember what it was. But there was basically two different two different parts in the map. There was the, most of the map was a PVE map, right? So there's you against the AI. And then the, I think it's the dead zone, but I have to figure out if that's actually what it is. Um, but that's the PVP area of the game and that's where you would go to get like you know a lot of like the big like legendary uh drops and like other like really cool gear um and that's when it like turned into an extraction shooter because you have to take this loot that you get and you have to go to an extraction point call for a helicopter get the helicopter and then like get your stuff out of there right and then obviously what's going to happen you're going to call when you call for an extraction Everyone in the dead zone area is alerted that there's an extraction happening. And of course, people ascend and they try to take your stuff and whatever, whatever and it's a nightmare. Um, right. They had they did a couple of things that made me play the game more. So one of the things is that a lot of the drops, a lot of the really, 
and and most of the really 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 legendary drops still remained in that area in the pvp area but they incorporated some more of those into the pve because if you're like me you're someone that i would just prefer to play pve i don't really have any interest in playing pvp Mm -hmm. at least not that way right so like bringing more of those over there um i think at, at, at one point being able to toggle yourself maybe on and off in the in the pvp area uh, was another thing they did, and that helped with that. So, like, and then obviously with that, it was always tweaking damage outputs and, you know, how much damage a weapon did, base stats, how much it, it would change. Um, as far as, like, when you try to get an attribute or get a component for a weapon, it would have different stats or different attributes connected to it. The The best game I can use to kind of describe some of that mechanic would be the first Destiny. Um, and okay. so, like, you know, you get like, oh, I have this scope, but this scope has this buff to it. And what you could do is, is that at one point, like you were, you were stuck with it. Right. Um, and then you'd either have to like deconstruct it and then build another one and hope that you got a better role. And then at one point they just added a reroll function where you could just automatically reroll what you built. And it wasn't oh, cool. as, it wasn't as resource, uh, it wasn't as resource intensive as deconstructing it and building another one it required right. less components or iron or anything like that so those were a couple of changes that were made that i was like okay now i'm playing this game more before i was you know and at this point i at the point where i, I kind of stopped playing it i probably had over 20 something hours into it but seeing those changes and that stuff it pushed me over to where i think by the time i got done playing it I had the equivalent of like three and a half days, whatever that is, of time in. So Dang. we're talking like close to, if not over a hundred hours, you know? Right. Um, so yeah, that that's like one thing I think of, but that's like a, a good, that's a great thing. I, we were kind of talking about before, like sometimes they do it with single player games and I hate that because it's like, what are you, who, why are you, why are you touching my stuff? This is a single player <laughs> game. It's not, it's not affecting <laughs> you in any hurting? way. Right, exactly. You know, like I'm not hurting anyone, and it's like, oh well, you know, we saw that people were maybe. I think one of the what was it? What game? I think Elden Ring was one of those, where they made those changes. Like, well, we're seeing that some people are exploiting it. They're like, why do you care? It, it, no one else is being affected in this. You've already you're you're from software. You already add in um um artificial limitations to make your games more difficult. Like, yes, your games are difficult because you program them well and you do mm-hmm. action well. You also add things that are antagonizing and annoying just to make them harder. You're already <laughs> doing that. Why are you messing with it more? We found an exploit. Let us have the exploit. Half of From Software's fame of their games is that people speed run them and they find exploits in the game. That's a huge component of the From Software like community. Like, why are you trying to take that away? It doesn't make any sense. Um, right. So, like, w- w- in case cases like that, it gets, like, really annoying. And then in a case like that, yeah, I wouldn't play it. I'd be like, okay, you're going to mess with my game while I'm trying to do my own thing. It doesn't affect anyone. I'm out of here. I'm going to go play something else that allows me to go do whatever I want to do. I'm going to go play Power World. How about that? Even though they've been tweaking <laughs> stuff, too. But uh, Yeah, so, like, I feel like I'm going to be more so an Apex this, this season, more so than Overwatch. Like, I don't notice too much i've only played a couple games but they've been ruined by people just like leaving or not doing anything i it's the seasons started on tuesday and i've had more leavers and afk afkers in overwatch this week than i've had in the last four or five months Mm. so i don't know if it's because they're just annoyed with the changes and just don't care and just ruin the game for everyone else when they can just finish that game and then get off of the game but yeah i i haven't had that issue in in apex so maybe it's because i play comp on both and people are less likely to leave in apex and comp than they are in overwatch Hmm. but yeah overall apex has been a better overall this season for it's only been out for Two, three days but but i also forgot to mention that apex added another uh, limited time event where the you still drop but it's just at a random location and it's only 30 people instead of 60 people and the weapons are pre-modified so you know like they have the common 
system. So you'll find mm-hmm. like a, a blue weapon or a gray weapon or a gold weapon and they have attachments on them already. And it, it's really it's really fun. And in this game mode, which I think they could, should add that every game mode, after you die, you can just hit one and it recues you and you're just watching the person that killed you or, you know, their team. You can swap between the three. And I, I think that was a really cool feature. OK, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a faster fighter rail mode. You don't have to search for the attachments. It's just right on the guns. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I feel. I I don't think I'll probably even complete the battle pass for Overwatch this this season. Yeah. Yes. And then you get you get into that whole thing where like if there's a lot of discontent and there's a lot of like dropping of numbers in weird ways where they become the player count becomes erratic then they completely like reverse those changes or they like step off of them in some other different direction and then you're like well now what what is this i'm playing now then it's like a whole different way you have to you have to almost in some instances kind of relearn like how to approach a game how you're going to approach a situation in the game because it's modified and then modified again so many stuff in a short amount of time mm-hmm. you know yeah which is i mean it's just it's just all, it's just all annoying i agree and that's just with you know uh, us commoners like there's people that make a living off making content for video games and they have to sit there and remake the content like okay now that this gun does this much damage and these people have this much ap and you know, like they go down to like the minute details of everything. Yeah. Cause so, you know, like this gun is better than this gun by 0. 0.3 seconds and you know, whatever, like they take time to do that. And I get, they don't have to, but like people love knowledge, even if it is just a video game and people want to do as best as they can. And if they know that this gun is better yeah. than this gun by five damage every three seconds, they're, they might win a fight because of that. Right, yeah. So now that's, they have to do it all over again with a change. You know, yeah. that's, that's why, you know, every season is when they usually make changes. So it's not as sporadic as you said. But when they do crazy changes and then they try to revert them or make them a different way, like you said, and then that just throws every, everybody through okay. a loop. It throws everyone off. The experts get questioned. Like you said, like people that are watching those type of channels, they're, they're that type of content. They're the people they want. They want the extra. They they're into the minutia. They want the the small details. They're like, okay, yeah, if I can do, um, if this does, you know, five points more damage every point three seconds, and that means like I can get fifteen, twenty here, and I'd have to pick this weapon and calibrate. This is this is how I win a battle, and then it's like, hey, all that information it gets, it's completely not even that it's well instead of it being five points, it's three. Or it's two. It's well now if it's same calculations. You actually you actually do just you you actually you give them more health. Now how now right. how it works is <laughs> it doesn't take away it doesn't take away health. It actually gives gives them health. Like it, 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 this is how much we've changed it. And then to maybe have to follow that up a month later and be like, okay, now it actually gives them more more health because they change it again. Like it's it's yeah it's a, it's a whole circus that can become something. Yeah, that's that's the live service for you, I guess. Yeah. It is live service. That is that is one of the one of the many possible follies of it is that they they take it in a direction that just doesn't work or doesn't make a lot of sense, and you're kind of like, what? You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. So speaking of what? Speaking of directions and what? <laughs> uh, my topic has to do with I'm not sure. Not let me make a very hyperbolic statement. I'm not sure yet if we are in the throes, if we are in the midst of the death of game consoles. Now, I know that people hear that and they'll say, that's absolutely absurd. A matter of fact, Xbox and PlayStation are talking about their next game consoles already. And my point would be exactly. So uh, <laughs> in previous in previous conversations uh, on the pod, we've talked about what's a good, what's a good amount of time for um, right, yeah. a console gen, right? right? I remember that topic. Yeah. yeah. And... I believe that that I was the one that was kind of on the side of like I'm cool with the the more compressed maybe five yeah. to seven year type of gen time, right? Mm-hmm. Um part of that part of that whole thing, that argument for me is that 
if it's a typical time, if these are just the usual days we're living in. Okay. Um, there is talk, uh, PlayStation, the first and Xbox following it up um, with Phil Spencer saying on a podcast and then and PlayStation making a statement that both the PS5 and the Xbox Series XS are in the later stages of their console life. They're in the later half, I think, PlayStation said explicitly. Um, these consoles came out in 2020. It is now 2024. They, they came out, I believe, in, in like summer, fall 2020. So it's technically not quite four years yet, but almost. Right, just trailing behind. Yeah. Um, these, these, <laughs> these consoles came out during a pandemic. Uh, they came out in a during not only during the pandemic, but then all these subsequent things that follow a pandemic, such as supply chain issues, right? In in mm -hmm. um, economic instability, right? We are in that right now. The economists may say that, hey, we're not really in a recession, but if it looks like it and it smells like it, right? It has to be it, right? Right. <laughs> I'm not sure if people if people want to go ahead and log on CNBC or wherever they get their news and want to look at the amount of tech layoffs that have happened this year. Um, we're in the midst of something not good economically. And so the idea that they're saying, hey, at the end of these seems to be a little out of touch contextually with, with what's going on right now. And I think that it is so, in some ways speeding up the death of console games. Because do you know what's not going away so fast? Which which not what's not putting people in a oh my god is 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 what I got already over? It's what? PC gaming. Oh oh yeah. PCs you're right. now PCs have already and this is a thing that I don't know if we're really talking about it. PCs already came and taken ate their lunch. I know you read the headlines and it's like PlayStation is selling like crazy. Nintendo Switch sold like crazy. PlayStation's outselling Xbox two to one. All true. PC still came and ate their lunch. And it's been eating their lunch. And the issue of it now is that if I want the latest and greatest for me, is that I can properly update my CPU and my GPU to something that's workable, something that's usable, and something that performs the equivalent of maybe a PlayStation 6 for way less than it would probably require to get a PlayStation 6. But on top of all that, we've had supply chain issues. So these game consoles, though they came out in 2020, I would argue weren't really accessible or available until early to mid 2021. Yeah. So it was a while. So you're telling someone that maybe just, I mean, there's tons of people that are like, I just got an Xbox. I just got a PlayStation. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, I'm ready to go now. And PlayStation saying, hey, loser, hold up. Are you ready to shell out another $600? In another three years for a PlayStation <laughs> 6. Huh? Are you ready for that? This is going to be the largest technological leap yet. They said that about the last consoles, and I don't know if we've even experienced what the technological leap is supposed to be for these consoles. Right. There was a whole hubbub about, hey, these consoles can do 4K 120 frames. You're lucky if a publisher gives you 4K 60. I mean, Starfield's yeah, uh, out here giving you 4K 30 <laughs> at launch. They just gave you 4K 60, I think, or maybe full HD 60, right? We're talking about, hey, we can do 4K 120 frames per second. Okay, great. There's nine televisions in the world that can do 120 hertz. Yeah, but you like, just expected me to just play it on my computer <laughs> monitor? Like, what's going on here? I and I remember I was talking about this kind of earlier. I remember one of the selling points of the PlayStation being 8K upscaling. Who the bleep has an 8K TV? What? It's Warren. It's I mean, Elon. It's Jay Z. Who else? Who else got an 8K TV? Not many. You're selling me consoles. You're gonna have a PlayStation Six out before I can even see the PlayStation Five 8K, 8K upscale anything. What, what's the point of this? What's the point of this? And it, again, it's all in context. I don't believe that this is a major issue if we've had a nice, steady, simple six years. You know what I'm saying? If we had a, right. if we were having a 2012 to, uh, uh, not even like a 2012. I'm trying to think, but maybe if we were having like a, like a like a 20 like a 2014 to 2019 type of thing, right? A 20 a 20 uh 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 
2013 to 2019 type of thing where we're just everybody just strong. It's just strong out there. Then maybe, maybe we can say, okay, that that works. But dude, you freaking release a, a council in the minute in, in the middle of the freaking Spanish flu. You got nobody's got jobs out here. They can't get your stuff for a year, and you're up here saying, "Yep, well, we're already in the later half of the life cycle. Get ready to do this again." There's the other argument of it's like, it's absurd. There's the other argument of, especially with Xbox. It wasn't until this podcast we weren't for sure if you were making consoles anymore. That's what that was. What's going every every time I look on a, a, a gaming site or a podcast or a YouTube, everyone's like the fall of Xbox. Right, yeah, based they're, off they're of rumors, going counselless because, and like, because I they're going counselless, and that and that they're and that their um, exclusive games wouldn't be exclusive anymore. And for one, for one, I mean, who, council exclusives aren't the only way that a platform can exclusively provide value. It's the way we're used to, right? But if you're going to look at me and say, "Hey, Xbox is providing you exclusive value because it's the only place that um, you can get Starfield." I would say I would like everyone else to participate in Starfield because you're trying to sell me on Starfield being the thing that keeps them with the Xbox. That's not a good sales pitch, right? Right. So I'm perfectly fine with PlayStation people having Starfield. Why would I not want to have them? Right. So, uh, so that whole thing was going on, and then it turns out that it, it's not that Phil Spencer's having to tell people, "Hey, we're still going to make consoles for Xbox. We're going to make consoles." I understand that it seems like we're failing, right? We just bought Activision for eight hundred trillion dollars. It's going to be okay, right? <laughs> but, but, but it's interesting, kind of the the narrative and different things that are coming all around there. But it's interesting for Xbox to even say, like, "Yeah, we're in the later half of a life cycle." I would ask the life cycle of what your yeah, biggest they're, they're... game. Was a Pokemon ripoff, at least in my approximation, <laughs> that you that you didn't really that just happened to be in your the life cycle of what? Right. How do they even fall into that? They're like, oh, look at this. Uh, well, we'll pick this up. It, it's. I think. Um, I can't remember. I think is it the chief technical officer? I think Bond. Uh, is her name? She's like one of the heads of over like Xbox hardware and stuff like that. And she's like this next Xbox. It's going to be our biggest technological leap yet. It's going to be the biggest one ever. And it and I'm like, okay, Redfall. It doesn't matter how great your console is if your game is right. Redfall, right? There's other priorities you need. And biggest technological what? So now it can do 12K? That's great. No one has a 12K TV. Exactly. What are we, what is the ends for? And if you're giving me, you know, this this awesome system, like say, you know, you just give me a brand new, you know, huge diesel truck. If you're giving me unleaded gas, what does exactly. that do for me? Right. You're like, hey, nothing. Here's this, here's this brand new spanking. It's not even a 2020. It's not even a 2025. It's a 2028 brand new Ram diesel truck. And because we love you so much, we're going to give you an unlimited supply of premium unleaded gas it's like well it's awesome. a diesel truck right thank you uh, it's it's, it's a diesel truck uh. um it's just it's just the thing to take in to take into consideration that hey everybody's poor dude and we don't have the money nor the time nor the resources to say okay time to pony up for another console launch i mean all the content creators and, pe and people like that will love it because then they get to sell what ifs for the next what, however many months but right. realistically for people it's like we can't really do anything with that and mm -hmm. we we just got these things like i was like i was fortunate enough to be able to acquire to get my xbox and my playstation i believe right within a month of them coming out right i feel like i just got them i feel like i just got them Right, because there's, you know, as you're saying, there's just not much of interest of the games that were on there. Yeah, I mean, you think about like it's to, it's to a point where even like these games and their biggest, some of their biggest franchises haven't had a chance to get on the like X again. We again, we have a few years left, but, are, right. but Xbox, are you telling me that there's a possibility that you're going to go a whole Xbox generation and not have a Gears of War game on there? Right, uh, PlayStation, are you going to go? the entire life cycle of this and have, you know, just, I mean, just really just one God of War you've released for it or just one last of us or whatever that you've released for it. Right. Like that's what it is because it used to be that these franchises would run multiple installs and multiple releases on the same game, Jim. Like, is that's what's happening right. now? 
Like exactly. Jack and Daxter. There was three of them on the PS2. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, is that, uh, these are first party games. These are the games exclusive to your, to your consoles. We expect that you sell them more. You guys are PlayStation. It's PlayStation Studios. It's Xbox. You're not Rockstar. You can't release a. You can't release one game every 15 years. You know you have to make more constant things. And the fact that we just got these games, I feel like they're losing the context. We, we just got these consoles. Everyone just got these consoles. We're poor. No money. Right. Pandemic. Like, <laughs> I, I don't know why, but it's had this uh, metaphorical view. Like Xbox and PlayStation, they're like an artist in music right but all they have is features where's your yeah. music at you know yeah like we we want some original stuff from you yeah uh, if it's good at least yeah. but like oh look look we're acquiring all these all these different companies and look all these cool games that they have what what do you have yeah yes you have got a war you gave us one that's you know that's like that's What's a great analogy. On? That's a great analogy. It, you know, it's like they've released a bunch of EPs. They've released a bunch of four or five track EPs. And one of those, one or two of those tracks may be bops, but you become an artist that we can rely on with an LP, with a full cohesive body of work. And they're not allowing the amount of time or length necessary to create an LP. It's just EP, EP, EP. You know, this EP is going to be fire. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, why? Well, this EP was produced by this top producer. It's like, okay, but what about an LP? What about a nice 10, 12, 14 track album to give me an eclectic full breath of your sound right. and your creativity it's, you know no ep 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 <laughs> this bop right here this one got young this one got a, a young thug on it this one got this on it it's like come on you have to give more complete more complete representation representations of your work um and the idea that they're saying hey we're in the later half we understand it's barely been three years we understand that a year and a half of that you couldn't get the thing that, that's the other wild thing to me. It's not just that it came out in 20 for a, for a year, year plus you couldn't get one barely. Yeah. I, I, I don't go shopping like a lot, but I have only seen two PS fives in a store and it was Best Buy. Yeah. I haven't seen any at Myers, Walmart or Cro uh, Kroger. They're not going to have them. Uh, just any general store, you know, Target, they, you know, they have games and gaming accessories and stuff like that. Nothing. Not a single one. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, and, and it's crazy, especially Sony saying this, like, hey, next version, technological leaps, we're progressing so much. It's like, you guys came up with the PS5 Slim. Do you guys understand that you came out with the 2023, 2024 equivalent of a Sega CD? You guys came out with a Slim version and then have a disc attachment I got to plug into it. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> I, I thought this was 2023, 2024, not 1994. You're gonna say you're gonna sell me a Sega CD? Is that what's going on, play Sony? Like it's it's ridiculous. And and again, I think that it just paints it to someone. Someone's just saying, hey, you know what? I'll just buy a secondhand 3080 and plug it into my rig, and I'll be good to go. I could play all the latest games. You know, Xbox and right. PlayStation are you know Hell Divers Two is an example where PlayStation's doing a, syn a synchronous or a simultaneous release on console and on PC. They're finally understanding that PC isn't their enemy, right? It, it kind of is, but it isn't their enemy, right? I think right. PCs. I think PCs their enemy from a business practices standpoint because PCs are way more democratic than Sony would like. Um, but they're figuring that out. Like, hey, wait a minute, we can sell fifteen million copies of god of war on, P on playstation and exactly. we can sell That's two million on pc you know? exactly like yeah exclusives do bring people to your consoles which uh, you sell and you make all that money but there's some people that just will not buy a playstation or will not buy an xbox right but a million of those people will buy the game that you made for it if you put it on something else great and that's 100%, again, just going a little bit into the Xbox thing where I didn't understand people ripping them saying, oh, well, then nothing's exclusive. For Xbox, it doesn't behoove them to be. They're in third place. Sony outsells them two to one. So if Xbox has sold 20 million units, that means PlayStation has moved 40 million units. Why would I not sell my Why would I not sell my thing on, on, my, on 40 million other items, on 40 million other devices? Even right. if, even if uh, just a, a percentage of that, if I can move 5 million more, that's tens to, to hundreds of millions more 
in profit. And if I can at the same time also build the most build the best and most affordable and feels like most fair um subscription service of games because it's not Sony. Sony is ripping you for everything. I don't know if people understand this. <laughs> Sony wants all your money. They believe they're entitled to all your money. They've been this way forever. Yeah, it's so six hundred dollar PlayStation Three is who they are. They were humbled and they had to move a little different, but it's who they are. And they've always believed that they that, that they were that right. So for Xbox to be like, look, I can bring Game Pass to Sony to a PlayStation to forty million. We're going to kill them now. Of course, Sony's not going to let that happen. Why? Because they know they would. Mm-hmm. There's no one. How are they going to put their stuff on Sony's platform? It doesn't behoove Sony at all to let them on their platform. So yeah. again, I, I don't know where all that came from, but. What's further more disturbing is that this talk of, of next gen of the, already, we just got here. Give us a little bit right. of time. We just got Power World. We just got Starfield. We and just like, got God of War. Exactly. Like you were saying, like, this isn't even enough time for some developers and stuff like that, like indie uh, developers. Like, the, there's supposedly Last of Us 3 is in development. They remastered The Last of Us 2 for this, but The Last of Us 2 came out on the PS4. So by the time Last of Us 3 is done, PS6 is going to be out. It's going to be the same but thing with them. Yeah. They're going to be they're making it now, but they're using the unless they already have the technology they're going to have for the PS6, you know, for like how to read the disc and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It, it's almost moot. Cuz yeah. they need to work on the game with that technology. And a lot of people don't have that, especially like indie developers. They have like, hey, here's my game. It's on Steam. Yeah. Can I can I put it on your PlayStation? Well, we're coming out with a new system next year, so maybe then. And then by that time, either the indie game blew up and people got it somewhere else, or it crashed and no one plays it anymore. Yeah, I do also wonder if this is trying if they if they are trying to speed up the push to go discless. And just go completely digital. It feels like that may be another thing because I feel like digital is going to be pushed. That is a good more point. I did, I did say disc, but like there's, it's however I don't know. Is it, is it still different nowadays, or if they just make a game and it can just go on the PlayStation or Xbox? Like there's some games where like I think so. For instance, I think Xbox exploring it with Hellblade. Hellblade is one of their most highly anticipated games, and it's a mm-hmm. digital only uh, game. It's digital only. Right. So it's so like maybe I, what I said is dinosaur talk. Well, I mean, I I think it's a no. I think it's an interesting thing to explore in regards to like what they might be doing next with them. I'm just wondering, right. I, like you said, that I'm just wondering aloud: is this them trying to speed up the discless process? Of them saying, "Hey, PlayStation Six, here's the thing," and in order to make sure that we got it a hundred percent. This thing is completely technological leap. We had to get rid of the disk drive, guys. It's taking up space. We had to get rid of it so that way this thing can pump out, you know, great content. Like we understand that we get that that in the PS5, we gave you a digital only version of a PS5, and we put a 600 gigabyte hard drive in it, right? I understand that we did that, but we need to take the disk drive out so we can give you even more space. I mean, come on, guys, we got you. We got to get rid of it. And Xbox is over here like, hey. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We gave you the Series X. This is more of a boutique thing. So what's going to happen is, is that we'll provide you a disc, but you're going to have to pay way more money for it. So you're going to have to pay way more money to utilize this, I think, like very low cost as far as license mechanism of putting a disc into a console and having it read and move. But here's the thing. Like Steam's done it. I don't ever think about a disc when I'm playing a PC game. That's very true. So it it could maybe this is a push to also like rapidly speed that up in addition to everything else. But I just think it's poor foresight when you think about where we're at as far as the society right now and what we can afford to do and everything that we've gone through the past four or five years to say that, yeah, we have three these three, four year old consoles. They're going to be done in probably another three, four years. Typically, I would say, yeah, that makes it that makes sense. Six, seven years for a console gen. That makes sense. This has been the. Most ridiculous six, seven it years. It has not been a very nice six years. Yeah, in a while. And the idea that three it, and then gonna be a three. In the eye of all that, you can still say that it kind of feels like a little detached or you have ulterior motives. So I don't know. 
Yeah. It, no. No. Just no. Just, <laughs> no. We won't, just we won't buy them. <laughs> just no, we won't buy them. I, I I'm not going to buy it because I can't afford it. Yeah. Not and because I, I don't want to buy it. If you're someone that typically just plays indie games now, which totally makes sense, by the way, as someone yeah. who's also progressively playing more and more indie games and not big AAA games, if you're someone that plays indie games, I don't think having a console makes any sense. Just get a PC, run a 40 foot HDMI, um, or if you were fortunate enough to freaking sneak a, key, a Steam link before they got rid of them, just run it to your TV and play that way. Like it, it to me, it just makes even less sense um, for a console, unless you're wanting something maybe like whatever Nintendo offers that's going to be able to be, you know, mobile and do something else, you know, but right. Unless you just, yeah, again, the games are coming to PC. Mm -hmm. Next gen isn't going to be a, we release God of War on PlayStation and then it comes to PC a year or two later. They're going to start doing simultaneous releases, right? Hell Divers 2 is the example of that. That's what they're testing out. These are all tests. You guys see them do these things with Hellblade? You see them do these things with Helldivers 2? They just both happen to have hell in them, but they're tests. <laughs> they're testing out ideas to see what they can get away with what they can do. Right. And like, the only thing about PCs is it's it's a pretty high starting cost. It is. You know, because you have to get every single piece. But after a few years, you can upgrade one thing at a time or two, you know? Yeah. It, and it becomes a, a cheaper thing to do. I mean, and then obviously, naturally, your PC is serving more than just the function of gaming, right? It's it right as everything it can help do your business, your work, your different things like that. Heck, if you want to make a living off of gaming, you're going to need a PC anyway, right? Just to like either like capture your 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 footage or the stream or something like that. Like, there's mm -hmm. so many other utilities for PC outside of just gaming. But yes, it's a higher startup cost. If you want a halfway decent rig, you're looking at seven eight hundred dollars to start, right? Um, but if you're a schmuck that just, if you're to Sony, if you're a schmuck that just got a PlayStation five, you, you gotta be ready for this PlayStation six in five, six years, homie, just save up until then. And by the time you drop $1,100 between the both of them, bro, you could have got you a really built up rig with probably a 4070 super or TI in it or something. And you'd be, you'd be straight. You'd be playing games. That's the other thing you have to keep in mind is that you're playing games at a higher quality at higher frame rates for a longer amount of time. Yeah. That's uh that's it for my topic. I think it's, right. I think the console stuff is wild. That leads us uh towards the end of the podcast where we have final thoughts. When we make a final thought about anything that can be related or unrelated to the podcast episode. So, um I feel like I rambled for a little bit. David, do you have a final thought in mind? If not, I can give one. I do. Okay. So, I started making music and I'm very upset with myself because I wanted to do this 15 years ago. Mm. And, you know, I downloaded a DAW and tried to play with it, mess with it, looked up a few things on YouTube, how to do stuff. And I just, I quit very quickly. I made a few sounds and called it quits. But like now I'm, I'm picking it up well enough you know i'm learning quite a few things and just having simple sounds there's so much you can contort and change and twist and make a completely different sound and use it for a completely different reason mm -hmm. and you know i i could have been a vc or you know millennium you know five yeah. six years ago right you know well for one, I would I would prefer you be Illinium, rest in peace, Avicii. But uh, but uh, touché, touché. But um, yeah, that's that's super cool. You want me asking what what DAW are you using for that? I'm FL Studios again. Okay, that's why I'm that's why I'm I'm like more upset about it because it is kind of quite easy as soon as you just put a couple hours into it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, all those things are like even with FL with with FL Studio. It, it is user friendly, but it doesn't present itself that way. It, yeah, it, it presents itself like somewhat complex. Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember using FL Studio a long time ago, like right before they, right before I think FL4 is the last one I got. So right after wow. they stopped, they started calling themselves Fruity Loops and just became FL Studio. Mm -hmm. Um, 
Yeah, that was the same thing. Like for me, I just couldn't understand the concept of it. So then I ended up using another program called Reason. And uh, okay. that is what made sense in my mind. Um, but yeah, like FL Studio is great. I was just thinking about all this stuff too. Cause I recently downloaded um a DAW to try some more like recording things and whatnot. Yeah, I was just saying, what, did, what were you using when because you were making music right before we started this podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was so what I started doing though, and I'm I'm working on trying to work on some more, but what I started doing is, is that I'm just doing like vocalization parts, just like got it, just like the singing kind of re- singing rapping type of thing. I was doing the producing for a while, and I I just I just did. I just don't have. I just didn't have. I couldn't. I couldn't create what I thought was a quality standard of what I would want to put out there. So, um, okay. but I, I messed around with all that stuff. I thought about going back and dabbling in it just because it was another thing to do. But yeah, uh, mostly it was just reason I would use. I would use reason, and then what ended up happening is that a long, long time ago, um, I worked at Guitar Center. And I became a certified Apple audio specialist and I was given a free version of then Logic Pro 8. And at this time, Logic Pro was like a thousand dollars and I got it for free. Dang. Um, and so I learned how to use Logic that way. So later on, when I was like producing stuff, I was using Logic Pro. Um, Logic Pro, a little bit of reason, using different things that way. Um, got the, the little MIDI keyboard, stuff like that. It's all really cool. And there's so many other tools that, that are out there now. Um, one one thing that I tried to get into was there's another one called Ableton, which is like people really kind of compare it with FL. That is mm-hmm. so complex, but it's such a powerful program. Uh, it's really cool. And then for the longest time when I did record before, I used Pro Tools to record. And there's actually a there's a free version of Pro Tools called Pro Tools Intro. Um, and I think it, it limits you to eight tracks. But it allows someone, if you're interested in possibly working in like a professional studio, become a recording engineer or something like that, you can work with Pro Tools. Pro Tools is an industry standard. Um, so you can work with the system if you want to, right? But it, it all just depends on like what works for you. And I remember trying FL Studio, making some stuff in it. I liked it, but I just couldn't get quite um, what I wanted, which is which was frustrating because every time I went on YouTube to find out what I can use to make what I wanted, they used mm-hmm. FL Studio. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, oh, like what? You know? And so it, I, it kind of, I, my, as my taste progressed, because I started out as mostly just wanting to do hip hop. And then again, I want to say, I was, I was thinking about this the other day. I want to say maybe 2011, 2012 is when the EDM wave really started to hit. And that's when I went to Reason. And Reason is it for EDM. And I started using it and I would see like, Armin Van Buren and a couple of other like people that were like trans producers and stuff like that making it. And I'm like, Oh, this is freaking it. I've hit the jackpot. Right. So <laughs> that's when I was like really into it and doing it. Yeah. It's, it's, it, it's great. Yeah. Um, music, if you love it and if you love using it as an expression is a great thing to do just to do it, you know, not even to like make money. I mean, it's great to make money. I mean, I right. made songs and yeah. songs to make money, but just, just the act of doing it alone and being creative. Yeah. It's um, been a lot of fun. Yeah, it's super fun, super fun. So, I mean, have you put out any tracks for just people to listen to? Are you putting I, out for Are you putting out for feedback? Like, what like what do you got going on? I'm mean, I'm both. I mean, I made one song and put it on SoundCloud. That's the only thing I really know to put it on. Mm-hmm. I I know I can put it on YouTube, but I need to put it in like DaVinci so I can put like a a black photo up. So you know, because you need a video or whatever. Yeah, I just haven't done that yet. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, do, you, do you have a you have an artist name? Yes. So my partner wants to do this with me as well. And she's learning and stuff, too. She just hasn't sat down to make anything yet. Mm-hmm. And so it's we're bubbles and knives. OK, so like she is bubbles and she really likes uh, melody and like dreamy very high uh sounding kind of songs like i don't know if you ever heard of like casbo or odessa mm-hmm. or you know william black dabbin she you know yeah. she really likes the very heavenly awesome like just beautiful music so that it bubbles you know it's bubbly mm-hmm. and then knives that's me and i i like like 
the heavier stuff, like the heavy like drops, you know, like Excision and Sullivan King, and you know Wooly, you know Elenium, you know stuff like that. I like the like the harder stuff, and we mm-hmm. both like each other's other favorite music, you know. Like she also likes Excision and Elenium, and I also love Casbo and William Black. So like some of our songs are gonna be our own, and then some of our songs are gonna be like a mix of our two. So like, cause most artists, you know, like oh they have the heavy stuff, you know, like Sullivan King is just mostly metal, heavy drop and EDM stuff. Mm-hmm. And like Casbo is just very like beautiful, you know, wave into the music, kind of like music. So we're going to be like a, a mix of it. Nice. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I always felt like then too, like just the difference for me, it was like, Producing EDM compared to hip hop for me was like more fun because it felt more free because I was, though I, though I loved the genre was, I felt like, I felt like a stranger in it a bit. Mm -hmm. And so I felt less restricted to like, to cater to like the typical tropes and norms that you would see within the structure of like an, like a a hip hop song. You know what I'm saying? So like, yeah, that was really fun is such a huge spectrum of music huge. yeah it's there's i don't know a thousand different subgenres within it it is yeah. literally you, you can just as long as you as long as you have some zippy doodahs and a little boom boom boom, boom you know drop or whatever like what it sounds robotic you can just do whatever you want yeah like you're saying like hip-hop you know it has a very sound it's like kind of in a box you know yeah so you can throw some things out there and be a little different but then like oh this isn't hip-hop this is electronic hip-hop or you know whatever you know this is country hip-hop like people start saying it's fused with other things yeah edm is just edm yeah it's really interesting and i'm gonna i'll my final thought would just be an add-on to this but it's like a little bit of a story add-on which is really interesting so um i worked at a place where i worked at it's very corporate environment doing corporate work um and so obviously i'm like i'm in the i'm listening to myself doing whatever at this time this is like what probably 2018 2019 so like i'm still listening to edm but i'm very much transitioning into i would say now is my more kind of alternative listening so i listen to like a lot of alternative convenient like ironically a lot of artists i listen to are from australia for some reason um but still just doing the edm and stuff and like obviously mm-hmm. I like, i'm like i'm working i have two monitors I'm, I'm listening to music on youtube and one doing my work on the other um and i have a couple of other co-workers on my team um and so when they were just talking and we're talking about stuff and I mentioned, yeah, the music I listen to and I mentioned, I also make music and they're like, Oh, really? What do you do? And I'm like, Oh, well right now I have mostly been into like creating EDM. Like that's like really my passion and stuff. And so one of the other guys I work with, he's like, Oh, that's cool. I make music too. And I'm like, Oh really? I'm like, I'm like, Oh really? What do you do? And he was like, Oh, I make like, um, I do EDM mostly like, like, like uptempo house music, stuff like that. And I'm like, Oh, that's interesting. And so then I'm talking with someone else and they're like, yeah, you know, he makes music. He's like, oh, no, yeah. Did you not know? He's like famous. And I'm like, what? What? He's like, yeah, he's like well known. He's like, he, he, he goes, he travels around the world and does shows all the time. So and like, he just has this random corporate job. He just has this random corporate job. So I asked him about it and I'm like, yeah, they, they were saying, he's like, he's like, yeah, you know, like. You know, I, I usually like, you know, a couple of weeks ago when I was out, I'm like, yeah, I know you were out for like, you know, a day or two or whatever before the weekend. He's like, yeah, I went to Japan to do a show. That is awesome. I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I just went to do a show. He's like, yeah, I know I do shows in Japan. I'll do a show maybe in like, you know, France, Germany, Brazil, some someplace like that. You know, and I do like, you know, stuff around around America and stuff, too. And I'm like, why are you here? Right, that's crazy. He's like, well, you know, I know how to do this. I got an education for it, and you know, it helps pay the bills or whatever. So I'm just doing this. I'm like, this is so odd. Yeah, that's but this uh, is blowing my mind. It's 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 insane. It was insane when it happened, but now to think back on it, it is even more insane because I'm like, why are you here now? No lie, I'm not sure if you'll be able to find him easily, but his name is uh Rick Wade. I mean, he has he has like 
just like albums out and stuff like that. Wow. Um, and, and and it's it's crazy. Yeah, like if you go like yeah, he has a thing on Mix Mag from 2013 on YouTube. Um, it's it's insane. Yeah, it's it's insane. I think I think some of his stuff is one. Of, yeah, his stuff's on Bandcamp. The Groovehead EP. Well, he has some tutorials and stuff too. Yeah. He like broke his chops in Detroit's house scene. The early night. It's it's insane. And he and he just I just worked with them in a regular setting. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't it's the weirdest thing. It's crazy. Uh that is awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. And I think I think the last conversation I had with him, he was learning how to like program a game. He was like, "Yeah, check this video game I'm making. It's like a 2D side scroller." I'm like, "Are you just? You're like a genius, right? You're just like a genius, and you're right. just, just walking just around like you don't know. You're like, oh, that looks easy. Yeah, that's crazy. Some people just have that brain, though. They do. Just can't it's stop. Insane. Can't stop. Won't stop. I have to watch the same thing five times, and I might pick up one or two things from it. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent And then immediately, and then for me, immediately forget it. Immediately yeah. forget it. Yeah. Um, well, that that leads us to the end of level 97 of the Thoughts and Players podcast. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the podcast on your preferred podcast service. We are on Apple and Google and Spotify and yada yada yada, all that stuff. Uh, you can also follow the pod on the socials. We are on um uh uh well did I just say that I just said that, right? No, I said I've said podcast platforms. The socials yes. are Facebook. Instagram, you go. You got Twitter, this. that's right, TikTok, wait a minute, um, and then of course YouTube where we upload video versions of the podcast. If you want to support the pod, there's two ways you can do it. One is to get merch, okay, like uh, I quote this up, this phone case all the time because it's the most readily available thing, um, but like that has stickers, shirts, different stuff like that. I got to actually wear the shirt one day, I'll, I'll, I'll put it on. Um, also, we have a Patreon, $257 where we offer exclusive little content there um we're gonna have some more exclusive content coming there some cool ideas we got brewing up so you want to make sure you check that out uh but that is it for me david was there anything else you wanted to add peace all right thanks for tuning in and we will catch you on the next level